area in operant conditioning I want to explain is the idea of reinforcement schedules. Up until now, we've talked largely about continuous reinforcement schedules, like a vending machine. We expect to get rewarded from the vending machine every time we put our money in and press the button. If I call up and order a pizza or ask for a pizza on my phone, I expect that pizza to be delivered 100% of the time, otherwise I'm going to lodge a complaint, I'm going to seek out customer service. However, there's a lot of things we get uh, consequences for in everyday life that are not on continuous reinforcement schedules or not on continuous punishment schedules. You could have a partial reinforcement or partial punishment schedule, and we can still learn and change our behavior based on these things. There's four types of partial reinforcement schedules that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about them all in terms of reinforcement, not in terms of punishment, just to keep it straightforward. But keep in mind, these could all work for punishment as well. So there are the fixed ratio, variable ratio, fixed interval, and variable interval. And we're going to go into these in detail. So what is a fixed ratio partial reinforcement schedule? Well, aside from being a mouthful, it is the idea that rather than getting reinforced for every time you do a behavior, you only get reinforced for every second time or fifth time or 10th time or a hundredth time you do a behavior. This is the idea that if you are emailing your professor, rather than the professor emailing you back every time, they only email you back every three times you send the email. Could you imagine? If this was reliable and every third time you sent the professor an email, they responded, this would change your behavior. You would quickly learn to send three duplicate emails back to back if you wanted a response. Or every time you need to hear from them, you would do the behavior three times really quickly. And so this is something that happens in everyday life. This might be the time when you're playing a video game and if you have to do a combo three times, then you unlock a special move. So you do the combo three times very quick to get the special move unlocked. For instance, if you're playing a mobile game and you have to match uh, three types of candies and every time you match the candies, you don't get a point, but every fifth pairing or every fifth match, you unlock a new level. Well, that's also a fixed ratio reinforcement schedule. Fixed refers to the fact that this is fixed. It's always going to be the same amount of time. So every third time, every fifth time, every tenth time. And ratio means the amount of times you perform the behavior. So it's going to be a set number of times you perform the behavior before you get the consequence. So I have up here a little uh, punch card. This is a very type of thing in token economies. It's the idea you collect 10 stamps on a loyalty card and then you get a free coffee. So that would be a fixed ratio partial reinforcement schedule. And so because of this, we tend to see differences in one's behavior. Not only would you email the professor right away when you want that, but when you get closer to the end of that reinforcement card with the free coffee, you're more likely to try and make sure you get that coffee and get the free one out of it. So you can see the graph here. We tend to see um, that there is rapid responsing with a brief post reinforcement pause. And so when rats are in the operant conditioning chamber that Skinner built and they had to press the food pellet button, not just one time to get a food pellet, but they had to press it 10 times, let's say, they would quickly learn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and they get a food pellet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and they get a food pellet. So it would result in this brief pause. They knew as long as it was fixed and it was always the fifth time, 20th time, 16th time, they would become conditioned to doing it in a pattern and having that brief pause. So fixed ratio reinforcement schedules are pretty predictable. We like them. We can learn pretty quickly with them. In comparison to the fixed ratio reinforcement schedule, we also have the variable ratio reinforcement schedule. And variable means that it's not going to be consistent. Sometimes it's the third time, sometimes it's the seventh time, sometimes it's the 32nd time or the 22nd time or the, or the ninth time that we get rewarded. And ratio has to do with the amount of times we perform a behavior. So this is an unknown number of attempts that we have to take. And it could be sometimes very quick and sometimes it could be very long and it's going to change with every trial. So when this is the rats pressing the buttons for food pellets, sometimes they have to press it five times, sometimes they have to press it a hundred times. It's spontaneous, it's random, they don't know. And it's constantly changing. Now an example in psychology research that would be a case of variable ratio reinforcement would be two male researchers went to a very public square about 20 years ago and they started to approach any women that they saw and ask them if they would go on a date with them. And the purpose of this, and this was ethically approved, was they just wanted to see what the pattern of response would be. And so they weren't coercive, they weren't trying to be creepy, they were very polite, they had a very um, a rehearsed phrase that they would ask and say, hi, you look lovely today, may I ask for your number? And so they would go up to just every woman they saw, 
and they were required not to discriminate based on age or based on appeal or looks or what have you. They would just approach anyone. And what they found is some women said yes and gave them their number. A lot of women said no. And this was a variable racial reinforcement schedule because it had to do with how many attempts they performed, but they never knew. They might get three girls in a row that said yes, they might go 35 girls in a row without getting a number. And so they never know when they're gonna get the next one. And so this is the idea that they have to keep trying to see how many they can get. Those who gave their numbers were called and explained it was a study and they weren't stood up or anything of that nature, so it's, it's okay. Talking about our coffee example, rather than getting a free coffee after you buy 10, this would be an example of like the roll up the rim phenomena that every time you buy a beverage, you have a chance of winning a free one. And it might be that 20% of beverages will result in a free one, but it may not be every fifth coffee you buy. On average over time, it might work out to one fifth, uh, but you might need to get two in a row or go 40 in a row before you get one. So your attempts will get reinforced eventually, but you don't know how frequent that will be. And the last example I want to point out is a lot of video arcade machines and a lot of casino machines actually operate on this. And many of them have mods underneath or inside or in the computer program that can actually change the ratios. For instance, we know a lot of arcade games where there's like a little light circulating and you have to press the light at a certain time. Those are designed only to allow win at a certain variable ratio. It's not a fixed ratio because you could just figure that out and go up to the next one, but it is a variable ratio where it, it averages around, let's say one in a thousand, but sometimes it's gonna be the nine, 999th and sometimes it's gonna be 1,033 and sometimes it's gonna be 867, but it averages around one in a thousand will result in the win. That's still a variable ratio. Now that we talked about fixed ratio and variable ratio, we have to flip to the other side of these partial reinforcement schedules and talk about fixed interval. Fixed interval and fixed ratio are not the same. Now, instead of ratio, we have the word interval. And this means it's not about how many times you do the behavior. It's about how much time has elapsed or passed since the last time you were reinforced. So in a fixed interval reinforcement schedule, what we're looking for here is you only get reinforced once in a certain set amount of time. This is the idea if you have a mobile app game that will unlock a special feature for you once a day, let's say after 9 a.m. every day it rolls over and you don't have to unlock it right at 9 a.m. You could go in and unlock it at 5 p.m. but you can only unlock it once a day and it constantly resets at 9 a.m. Well, you that's really reliable. You know to go in and check your games every day at a certain time of day or before the time limit expires. And so that's a fixed interval. With the coffee example, this could be the idea that you're in a coffee club where you get one free coffee a week or one free coffee a month. And once you use your one free coffee for that month, you have to wait till the month rolls over and then you're entitled to that again. So maybe you always get your free coffee on the first of the month or maybe you wait till the 29th of the month, but you can only get it once per month. And this is also the, the idea that aside from uh, all those special couriers that we have now, Canada Post only delivers mail once a day. And this is the idea once you check your Canada Post mail in your mailbox and you've checked it for the day and it's arrived, it's not going to arrive a second time with before the end of the day. You have to wait until 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. the next day to receive your mail. Now, I want to point out to see what the graph looks like here. The other graphs were much more vertical. This one is what we call a scalloped graph. It kind of has this little dip down. And that's because once we know that it's a fixed interval and we understand the pattern, whether it's every day, every week, every two hours, every 30 minutes, we learn to pause after we receive that reinforcement because we know it's not going to be for a long time. And so this is the idea uh, that we, after we get the reinforcement, we don't try again for a while. And we know that there's no, after you check your mail at 1 p.m. and it's there, you're not gonna go back out at 2 p.m. and check it. But the next day, let's say you go out at 1 p.m. and it's not there. You might check it again at 1.30 and again at 2 and again at 3 and maybe it comes late that day and it comes at 3.30. Once the mail comes that day at 3.30, you're not gonna check it again till the next day around 1 p.m. So the, the type of looking for that and the type of behavior it's gonna produce is very different. And the last type of partial reinforcement schedule we're gonna talk about is the variable interval partial reinforcement schedule. This one is the most random and it's often the one that's hardest for us to understand and the hardest for us to break habits from. And that's because it has nothing to do with the amount of behaviors we've done and it has everything to do with the passage of time, but the passage of time we need is random and changes every time we get reinforced. 
So this is the idea that we don't know when our next win is coming. So because of that, we're going to keep trying and trying and trying again. With the coffee example, this just might mean that it has nothing to do with how often you buy coffee. It has nothing to do with how much coffee you drink. But once in a while, when you go to buy coffee, you get a free one. The person in front of you in the lineup decided to pay it forward and buy your coffee for you. It was totally random. You have no idea when it's going to happen again, and you can't predict it. And so this is the idea that we have no idea when it's going to happen. We find this comes into play a lot of time when it comes to gambling. Although slot machines we can think about in terms of variable ratio because we're actually pulling the lever, there's lots of times where it's nothing to do with our behavior. It just seems to be a fluke and it feels like your time has come and you're going to get lucky. You haven't won in a while, so you're going, the table's hot or the machine is hot and you feel like it's going to win. And so that is what makes gambling and casinos really addictive because if they haven't won in a while, people will pour money into them, assuming that a win is on the horizon and a win is coming. This is also something that keeps superstitions alive. Even if you don't receive a punishment for breaking a mirror once, you don't want to break a mirror again in case that's your time uh, to get punished. And we think about things like the superstitions around sports and playoffs and growing playoff beards or wearing playoff underwear. It's the idea that, yeah, maybe your lucky underwear didn't make you win this time, but you better wear your lucky underwear next time in case that's the time you really needed it. Importantly, if we see this graph, we find it's not too vertical, it's not too horizontal. It's just a steady rate. People are just going to continue doing this behavior at a linear rate because it feels like it's so random, they're gonna do it as much as they really enjoy the behavior.